be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. You know what time it is, how it is now, the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Gospel of the Lord. 
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ever notice that right before a storm is about to hit, the birds go silent? All of a sudden, an eerie blanket of quiet descends all around you, and you know something ominous is about to occur. For all of our gifts as human beings, it seems that we are the last creatures on Earth to sense when something momentous is coming to pass. Scientists believe that this is because animals have a better sense of sound and vibration than we do. They can sense when the barometric pressure drops or when low pressure systems are coming, and they react appropriately. Sharks swim to deeper waters. Animals go into hiding. Bees go into their hives. And the birds stop singing. One physicist, Amos Dolbear, even noted that you can tell the temperature based on the frequency of a cricket's chirps. Now, some of us do sense humidity changes. Some human beings can develop sinus headaches when pressure systems drop. But most of us are taken by surprise until we see the sky darken and the trees begin to sway in the wind. And then we suddenly notice the calm before the storm. We depend instead upon weather reports, science that can pay attention for us to help us know what's coming and plan for its arrival. Even then, we can't predict everything or how it will run its course. Our tropical storms are most dangerous, partly because of their unpredictability factor. Take Hurricane Ian, for instance. On Monday, it was supposed to wipe out Tampa. On Tuesday, the forecast changed. And on Wednesday, it wiped out Fort Myers Beach instead. We Floridians know that we must be prepared. So, we get a generator in case of a power outage. We buy flood insurance. We stock extra food and water. We keep first aid kits handy. We work out a what-if evacuation plan. We educate each other on the safest place in the house to gather. We keep flashlights, batteries, and transistor radios on hand. And we consult helpful how-to lists on how to keep our families safe in the event of an emergency. When things grow silent and the sky grows dark, our plan goes into action. Other disasters are even more unpredictable. Volcano eruptions, tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, and sinkholes, yet another Florida hazard. Some things can happen very suddenly, taking even the most prepared people off guard. Remember the old game called Musical Chairs? A group of people would assemble around a circle with only a certain number of chairs there in the middle. The music would play, and the group would walk around the circle. 
When the music suddenly stopped, everyone would scramble to take a chair. Those who couldn't get to a seat in time were cast out of the circle. This would occur over and over, gradually removing all the chairs until just one chair would be left, and he or she would be the winner. Music can also be used in the form of a gag called musicalis interruptus, in which a concert or a song may be going on, only to suddenly stop and be interrupted by someone who will address a person of honor or someone to be roasted who is taken, hopefully, by surprise. Both of these make for fun musical games. But think about it. When the music stops and everything goes silent, that means something new and different is about to happen. When the orchestra goes silent just before the play is about to begin. When the tuning stops in order for the instrumentalists to get ready for the first piece. When the soundtrack stops and you know something in that movie is about to happen. When the music stops, something is about to end and something else is about to begin. The American slang idiom for when the music stops means you don't get another chance. You're all out of extensions. You've come to the end of the road. You can get the gist of this idiom in a song by Don McLean, American Pie. It's a tribute to the death of Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and some others in a plane crash back in the 1950s. The line, when the music died, is a swan song to the sudden and untimely demise of those rock and roll heroes. These kinds of events take us entirely by surprise. In fact, it's the element of surprise that causes us so much grief and shock. And yet, we know life can change suddenly and unexpectedly. While we need not live our lives waiting for it, we do need always to be aware of it. Do what we can to ensure our best safety measures and try to live our best lives each and every day, grateful for the time that we have been given. In a sense, this is what Jesus is explaining to his disciples in today's gospel. No one knows, not even Jesus, when he will return one day, when the music of our world, the chatter of our lives, will come to an end. We cannot live in perpetual fear, paralysis, or anxiety, waiting for it to happen. We're not to try to figure it out with all kinds of plans, diagrams, predictions, or assurances. Instead, we need to live our best lives in gratitude for the time that we have been given, in prayer to God, and in worship of the one who makes our lives possible. We need to live in faith, assured that when Jesus comes and the world changes, when the music stops, we have done our best as human beings on this earth. We've loved well, we've shared well, we've forgiven much, we've shown mercy and understanding to others. Jesus compares the finality of the earth with the flood of Noah. Life went on in the usual ways right up until it didn't. No one knew. No one will know this time either. But like Noah, we can remain faithful, trust God, and live our best lives. We can prepare ourselves, our hearts, our minds, and our spirits for the coming of the Lord. We can stay awake to the presence of the Holy Spirit around us and stay in tune with our Lord Jesus and his direction for our lives. We can be prepared and ready for a storm to come 
even if we don't know when it will hit. Even if we don't know if it will sweep our way or not. Today, we enter into a time of Advent, a time in which we remind ourselves to focus on God and God's coming Son. It's a time of spiritual alertness in which we engage ourselves all the more deeply in our relationship with Jesus. Sometimes we can be absent-minded and distracted by the ways of the world and our own tempestuous lives. We can get caught up in conflicts, stubbornness, and petty things. We can lose our focus and allow the flame of our passion for Christ to burn low. We can get busy with all sorts of superficial things. Advent is like an alarm clock that wakes us up and reminds us to pay attention to the coming of the day to enjoy the music of God's voice in our lives and the chatter from the streets around us. For one day, the music will stop. The world will grow silent, and a new day will begin. But take heart. Wake up your spirit to the truth of Christ. Stir up your heart to the love all around you and the beauty of this amazing world. Be a part of God's symphony, of God's relational creation. And dance as though the music could stop at any moment or go on forever. We must be ready, Jesus says, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Be ready to welcome the presence of Jesus. Be ready to be a servant of God. Be ready to live as we're supposed to live. Be ready to act in the interests of the kingdom. Be ready to be faithful. In other words, live as though Jesus has already come again. Standing, let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed, page 10. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Please be seated. <coughs> Welcome to St. Andrews on this, the first Sunday of Advent. Good to see you here this morning, and good to have those who are watching at home with us as well. I invite everyone to stay for fellowship time after the service over in the parish hall, which can be reached through that door back there on your left, and then directly across the courtyard. So, Happy New Year. That's right. First Sunday of Advent marks the beginning of the church's liturgical year. So we have just left uh, year C. We have a three-year lectionary cycle. And that's where we are hearing from the Gospel of Luke. And now we're moving into year A today. And so for this next year, the Gospels will be mostly from Matthew, as you heard earlier. I want to thank everyone who came out last Sunday for our grand 101st celebration, luncheon, and dedication of our mosaic and our columbarium. We filled the parish hall up to overflowing. It was great to see everyone. Many thanks to those who came out. Also many thanks to those who organized it and made it such a great event. Uh, special thanks to Pam Curry and Richard Ferlita, who did a lot of the planning and implementation of last week's program. So many thanks to everyone for that. After the service today, you'll notice the giving tree is still up there in the parish hall. Uh, this is our annual outreach at Christmas time where we uh, buy some gifts for uh, underprivileged kids who are going to Cleveland and Kimball Elementary Schools. There's still some names on the tree over there in the parish hall. I invite you to pluck them off and then get those gifts and return those next Sunday. Also next Sunday, we'll be having our annual fish fry, which was on hiatus the last couple of years. Uh, it's coming back, so that'll be after the 1030 service next Sunday, luncheon in the parish hall. The annual fish fry, the proceeds uh, will go to uh, uh, help out with the giving tree party that we have for those kids that we're giving presents for, which we'll have a party here in the parish hall in a couple of weeks with that. Also, we have a new adult Christian edu education class that just starts, not too late to join us. It's on Sundays at 9.30 up on the third floor, and we'll be looking at the Grinch uh, this season there. So if you're familiar with how the Grinch stole Christmas, you can come on up and join us for that the next few uh, Sundays. Also, after the service today, Outreach Committee is meeting up there on the third floor in uh, the parish building. So if you want to join the Outreach Committee, uh, just join us after uh, fellowship time up there on the third floor. Also, I invite you to take a liturgical calendar home with you today after the service. You'll find those there on the table at there at the back of the church as you exit. And if you haven't had a chance to pledge yet, uh, pledge cards are available as well. We've heard from about 40% of our families, well, uh, good and faithful servants. I still haven't heard from a bunch of you, so prayerfully consider what you might give back to St. Andrews in the coming year with a pledge. Scribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heads. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. 
We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.